Hey, what's going on, y'all? Sam Slam here. Welcome back to a brand new Slam movie review. And we're using the webcam. Yeah, we decided to use the webcam. This is what I usually use for my vlog talk vlogs. Just the fast and the nit and gritty. It's kind of shitty quality. But I decided to do on this one today. We're here to see a 1982 American vigilante film directed by William Lustig. Vigilante. That's what the film's called, Vigilante. And I tell you what, this is starring Robert Forrester and Fred Williamson. And this is probably like the first, I mean, Vigilante films, like revenge films, are kind of my nature. I enjoy, I mean, but then again, there's not, there's, well, I mean, you have The Crow. Oh, that's, that's kind of a revenge, it's kind of a, well, it's a revenge story. He's a, from the Dead Vigilante. There's the Death Wish series, which I love the Death Wish series. Um, the Punisher. But there's certain things, but here's the thing here. This is a film that I was very looking forward to. I've heard of this film before. I mean, the director, I mean, he did Maniac. William Listig did Maniac. What else did he do? He also did... He directed Maniac Cop 2 and 3, which I did 1 2. I have not seen the third one, and I, I think I reviewed Uncle Sam. But yeah, he did the three Manic Cops, and I, 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 the, the Manic Cop series, I mean, I wasn't really too fond of. Manic Cop 1, I liked. The second one, didn't really care for it. This one, though, I'm trying, the third one, I don't really care about, but back to Vigilante. The thing is, here is. This film should have been called. I don't know, Vigilante featuring Robert Forrester. But then again, Vigilante, I mean, I just, I'm trying to think here before I even spoil it and everything, but just this, out of this whole film in general, just from its, like, and this, this was only a 90 minute film. Out of this movie in general, from the, just from watching it, from the beginning to the, the ending, to the execution of the main, which, this is the thing is, the, like about Robert Forrester's character, he's betrayed as like well. I mean, in the movie poster doesn't really have him, but I mean, he's like it's a it's a Death Wish ripoff for sure. Yes, but the thing is though, the portrayal of Robert Forrester as what's his name? Who who is he play? As Eddie Moreno has got to be one of the most un. I mean, I just did not really care for this guy, and he basically his whole when this whole starts and everything. There's rapes, there's this gang, I, I mean, and then, and he's not even in, d involved in this until his fucking ex-wife, his, no, his wife and his son inter, inter, intertwined or whatever, getting caught up with the fucking uh, gangsters, and then yada yada. Then you have Fred Williamson who's in here, who's, who, he's like, um, let's see here. He's a co-worker. They're all they're all blue collar co co-workers here, and they they're like vigilantes. Yeah, Fred Wimson, who's the leader, it's his, who is uh, Eddie's friend, and he's badass. I tell you what, of all and the the parts with Fred Williamson kicked ass. Hell, oh, the beginning of this film, this little intro as him in it talking about it's, it's tired. It's time I, we have enough. Time to kick these motherfuckers' asses. Um. Because blue collar workers are tired of these gangsters and they don't do shit. And then you have the get the the the, the corrupt courts, the corrupt systems, the law, you know. But the thing is, though, he, I mean, I love I love Robert Fred Williamson's like his all of his scenes and anything. He's like a badass in here. The opposite of Robert Forrester. And the and. And the thing is, he is just a regular. I mean, you, he's basically he's like a second. And this film, in my opinion, like it's just like he's portraying at, portraying as a fucking secondary character. I mean, at first, and then you see what happens to, when we we'll go through this. Yada yada yada. From the ending to this, the music the score is great. Who did the score? I don't know who did the score. Jay Chataway. I don't know, but. The score, the music was all cool. I love the music. All these synthesizers or whatever the fuck. That was all right. But just the acting, the portrayal, um, D 
did not give two shits. And, you know, let's just spoil it. I don't really care because this film, I mean, I, I, I thought this film would be all right. But no, when the main premise is, well, there's all these gangsters around and they are, and they, they get, they're, they're been told, like, they do this shit and then they get, like, the victim, they get out, they get out of jail easy, prison easy. And, yeah, these victims, rape victims, robbery victims, or murder, even murder victims, you know, they get, we get fucked, they get fucked over. That's the main plus. And then you, you introduce Robert Ford's character, Eddie Marino. Okay. His demeanor, okay, first he's okay. He's just got this little dead, like, I need to go to bed. It's his, his portrayal, just, okay, first I was all right with it. It's okay. Then you meet his fucking wife, played Vicky, played by Retina. I don't know what the fuck her name is, but I don't give a shit. She, I don't know what her patrol was. She's stupid. And, and here's the thing is, she's with her son. Her son, their son looks weird. Their son looks like this Chucky, like, no, my, my, my good buddy, good buddy doll, my buddy doll or whatever. And they're at a damn gas station or something. And then this gangster member is going, he's, he's fucking with the damn uh, gas station with, Attendant, he's this old guy who's getting gas everywhere, he's wasting gas all over him. And then Vicky Moreno, guess who starts this whole shit? She gets in the thing. Oh, I got tits and all I can bitch. She ends up bitch slapping the, the gangster, gets in their business, and then he just gets off because there's a cop around. And then, supposedly, the cop that the, they followed the woman, Mar Vicky Moreno, and her son. Now, I'm, I'm looking, I remember Death Wish One. But this one has a child involved. Well, the, in the Jeff Wish one, uh, well, this is vigilante, but, but Jeff Wish one, you know, he compared to the rape scene of their daughter and their wife, and then he killed the wife. And then the daughter was, like, scarred. Compared to this one, is this dumb bitch, you know what? I don't really, I mean, yeah, you know, they're gangsters, but this is why people stay their own goddamn business. And you, and then this woman, I, and throughout the film, I didn't give a fuck. Whatever, if she getting raped or whatever the fuck, beat the shit out of the kid. Now the kid, I heard, you know, it said so, the thing is, oh, his man goes insane because his his wife and his son gets killed or whatever. No, the dog, the the wife gets brutally mur uh, raped and left for dead. And then their son, in a graphic nature, just gangsters because they they find her house, they violate her and shit, and then. He's at the bar with all of his work buddies. He's supposed to, he's gonna come back, but Eddie and but his then his son's in the hiding in the bathtub. You see the silhouette of his shadow, and then this dumb motherfucker Prago, Prago whatever the gangman shoots his son, their son in the bath or like the silhouette. You see, and then it has in the the outside of the window shot is the blood spraying out of the window and shit. And her mom, his mom's like, oh no, my baby. baby. Okay, then she gets brute rape and shit. And Eddie, then when Eddie finds out from the cops and everything, he gets there because there's all ambulance and shit everywhere. He runs and then it has him get stopped. A co officer stops him in the house, like, "Oh, you need to do this yourself or whatever." And then this, and then it cuts to the hospital where he doesn't even. He looks distraught, but not like in a very emotional, just emotional way. Oh, my wife and is it brutally hurt, and then my son's killed. Nothing. Very dead fucking demeanor of his portrayal of Eddie Marina. Robert Forrest sucks in this film. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion on this. I just, I didn't care for his portrayal in this film. And then we, then we get, I mean, you don't even see any serious of this motherfucker. And then we have the court hearing. Which the motherfucker gets, like, they have, he is an attorney. And it's funny, Pooh cool because uh, of Esber, um, Eisenberg is like a lawyer or something like that. It's played by Joe Sp Spinelli, who was in the movie Maniac, because Lustig directed it. He just plays this corrupt, corruptive lawyer or whatever. I don't know, but the judge fucking gets him that he can let everybody out easy. These damn hoodlums here, because they got the guy who raped his, it brutally raped his wife and killed, well, who's the accomplice of killing their son. 
And then he only, he, but they fucked her over. They fucked him over. He got two years with the felony charge. And then he snaps. You killed my son. How can you do that? And he goes ape shit. He's in contempt of court. And so now we have, we follow uh, Eddie to jail. So in this little amount of, amount of this, uh, maybe 20 minutes of back and forth, maybe he goes to, he goes to jail. And then while you go from the scenes where he's in jail, where some this this new black uh, this black inmate wants his as his bitch, and he keeps fucking. With him. We can see we got to see some bare ass in this film, men's bare asses. And he comes back, and and then he, he come, and then you 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 you. Again, cat. Then you it cuts to Fred Williamson's characters be the vigilante taking out the dope dealers. Taking up the pimps, him and his blue collar, but his workers, his co workers, his vigilante group. And th those are the best scenes in this film. Those are the best fucking scenes in this film. And I thought, he, I thought Fred Williamson's character would die in this film, but no, no, he survives. But he, he, now we get Eddie, Marino, Eddie Marino's back. He, he, he lends a, a mentor at the jail who helps him out. Because he's fucking inmate but bullies, and yeah, it was big. he comes back, and then the guy who he's about to oh, get some ass, he has some titties, but the guy who got let go so walked early, this motherfucker, you know, he's out. Oh, I want him now. He he goes after Fred or Fred Williamson who plays Nick and says, "I want him." Me and the guy uh, Ramon or whatever the fuck his name is, the guy who raped his wife and stuff, and they get him, and then he's like. He trap him and he goes, "Hey, you killed my son." <sighs> shoots him in his fucking elbow and then he shoots him. It was very anticlimactic. I'm sorry. And just him being serious is just him. Robert Forrest being Eddie just when he it just no, it just looks so fucking forced. I didn't care for this shit. And then he he gets Prago, who's the last one, who's the one that shot the he killed his son. His death gets dropped 20, whatever, how many feet? <coughs> the music. Who? It didn't give a shit to me. I didn't even care. The, the characters are unlikable. Eddie Robert Forrester as the dad. You know, and then we find, and then this motherfucker, you know, I feel bad for the motherfucker too in a way. Just because his wife is, she's fine now. But she's so, well, she's got the trauma. But this is the thing I don't understand too. Is when women push people away. She she fucking doesn't want to see him. And oh, no one helped us. No one saved us. You know, and then blames him for it. No, bitch, blame your fucking self. You're the fucking reason why. Yeah, you're the one that fucking that was in the gang's business. She should have. They wouldn't fuck. They wasn't fucking with you. I mean, maybe they would, but then again, they should have followed. They should have made your own fucking business, or your son wouldn't. You wouldn't be beat the fuck out of. And raped, and then your son would be killed. And then now you blame fucking Eddie for it. And it's just like, ah, oh, even more bullshit. This film sucks. But yeah, he throws up Prego out the fucking tower, and then there's no fight or nothing. Just, oh yeah, the chase before that was gotta be the most boringest cat mouse chase that he found Prago with. Oh my god, it was like we had like 12 minutes left. And we have like this two minute, three minute cat mouse chase, and it's just like, oh my god. So yeah, his last kill is another anticlimactic way. He kills the fucking judge. He's pissed off. A car bomb. Played by a case of strain. Yeah, and that's your ending. And he goes off in the street. Who knows? Maybe he's went to go do. He's he joined up with. Nick and Burke and all them. It's just, and that's the ending of this film. I just like, I'm sorry, guys. I mean, this was a film that I mean, I love '80s. I love '80s low, a low budget for the the cult classics and everything. But this film, here I am thinking that it's gonna be great and everything. The score is great. All Fred Williamson scenes great. But at the same time, very anticlimactic. The way I mean, I just maybe didn't really care for the characters, but I did care for Fred Williamson's character because his character brought out class. And badass, but with Robert Forrester, I, I mean, I already want to. I don't think I even want to watch another movie. Maybe I'll, I'll try. Maybe in the future, find out if there's a, a movie with him in it. But I don't know. Him as an actor, right here, as the lead, I have no. no. This film was 
it just yeah, I, I'm like I like the Fred Williamson parts. I love the score. The music's great, but the story and with the, and with the lead with Robert Ward and then just and everything in general. His, his character of like who gives a shit. It's just like yeah, and then his ex, you know, his ex wife or his no, gonna be his ex wife. His his wife, whatever, is a stupid bitch. She's bitching like oh, oh, oh she would be hugging him. No, she's mad because she, his ass wasn't there. Well, he didn't know that you were gonna get fucking fucked with a gang. Dumb, stupid bitch. And then she fucks off. So whatever. But at the day, there we go. <coughs> I don't. I don't recommend this film. No. I don't care for this film. Definitely not rewatchable. No. There's nothing to it. There's nothing memorable about this film. And now I regret even watching this film because it's twelve fifty-five in the morning or in the morning. I'm gonna go to bed. And but yeah. But after this uh, review, I know. I'm going to be doing some, uh, yeah, to, to get the stink out of my, I just, I don't, this film was just, I don't care. It was a thumbs down. Don't care. I mean, it just, I don't really care. Thumbs down. Uh, but yeah, but, but after this, this, the next review, I need to watch, I'm going to watch Death Wish 3 to watch this shitty stink away because Death Wish 3 is my favorite and the first Death Wish I've ever seen. And I watched this when I was a young kid. It's been years since I watched it. And I got the Blu-ray. I got the Blu-ray for Death Wish. Well, I, I've already watched Death Wish 2 already, but Death Wish 3 and, the, and 4, and I think, well, I got uh, 3 and 4. And then there's the, 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 the I forget. He's got another one too. But for sure, I know I'm going to be doing Death Wish 3 and 4. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it back to back, but I know that Death Wish 3 will be the next film I will be reviewing. So, but I'm STS. If you like these reviews I do or thoughts and phrases or rants, check me out. Subscribe. Uh, check me on twitch.tv slash Sam 1990. Twitch.tv slash Sam to Slam all in one word 1990 with my video game streams. I play Assassin's Creed Odysseys. And then I also play Call of Duty Vanguard. And some other shit. But I also have vlogs with me talking about life. My vlog talk show. And my slam and filter, which is basically topics on, I mean, just this, it's just the same thing. It's just me talking, ranting about my life, ranting, venting, and talking about my life, sharing it with you. If y'all enjoy it, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Peace.